Many of you are familiar with BoundingIntoComics.com, the infamous website that has managed to take on pop culture and tell the truth, and yet still be searchable and found on some of the major web search engines. Bounding Into Comics is, well, a diamond in the rough, and it was rough getting to that point too. But the scrappy founder has found a way, that being John Trent, and he joins us today to talk about the tough times he faced trying to get bounding into comics to where it is now. We're going to talk about the culture war. We're going to talk about what is driving the people who want us to get away from the things that work and the things that we've loved to hear about and aspire to be for the last thousands of years. Oh, but they'll change it all, right? John and I are going to delve into topics that sometimes even veer into the spiritual or religious in nature. It's not something we do often here, but it seems appropriate considering those who oppose the truth and those who oppose good stories and those who oppose merit in terms of picking out what we want to watch based on if it's good or not. Well, they're kind of quasi-religious. They're weirdos. They're crazies. And we're going to talk all about it and explain it for you. Let's hop in. Explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we attempt to do each and every day here on the WDW Pro channel. If you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to those algorithms when you click it. We're talking about that notification bell. Once you've been watching this video, we covet your comments, so drop one down below and let us know what you're thinking. Joining us today for, well, I guess sort of an autobiography, uh, an examination into what I call the culture war, but which John Trent may call something else, is the previously named John Trent. Welcome back to the channel, sir. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be joining you on uh, on your channel. And a pleasure to have you. Now, I have been taking special notice of what I believe to be an escalation in the tensions throughout the Western world. Specifically, I can, I can see this in the United States. And I have previously expressed some optimism. That optimism is specifically targeted at the long term. Part of the reason that I'm optimistic about things coming to some sort of sensibility in the future is because I'm detecting that in the marketplace of ideas that is entertainment, that the market is speaking loudly against divisive content, against content that is non-traditional and attempts to turn on its head the, the values that societies which have been known as civilized have held for millennia, eons, etc. And so I can point to stuff like Star Wars, which I think is essentially now, it's not just that it's lost its evergreen status, it's become a parody of itself. It has, well, it, it is dead in my opinion. I don't know what else you would call a franchise that seems to lose more money than it makes consistently and is only kept on life support by the company that will not admit defeat. I look at other uh, properties like Marvel that have stepped into that same direction and are now suffering the consequences of it. And it seems to me that the majority of individuals simply want the sorts of narratives and story structures, the ideals and values that uh, we were all brought up for decades and decades to believe in. I'm not saying that the past is flawless, far be it, uh, far from it. But uh, I, I think that we all, all of us who are sensible understand what produces success and happiness and joy in life. And there, there is a minority that somehow became the gatekeepers of, of entertainment who express a totally different opinion there. But it, it seems to me that they have not succeeded. However, in the short term, I'm very uh, concerned. And part of that concern comes from that once, once the majority, the market, society has spoken, I fear that those who disagree with that position that the market has taken I fear that they'll become more extreme and uh, go farther in their attempts to undermine sort of society at large. What do you think about the short term versus the long term in not just entertainment, but then also going beyond it and implications for society? So I, I'm, I don't share your optimism at all when it comes to entertainment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, we, I, we have a stream called the Black Pill stream every Wednesday where we kind of go over what's happening 
um, in entertainment and we're blackmailing you on on entertainment. I don't see any uh, evidence whatsoever of uh, the studios that are kind of uh, creating a lot of this content, um, maybe making stuff that's different. And in, in fact, it, it always seems to be the opposite. They're they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling um, down now. I think we're probably at the quadrupling point. Uh, and they're they're constantly uh, pushing um, these agendas that you're talking about that I think go against um, what we as individuals um, are almost called to uh, to recognize as uh, quality content because uh, they're usually copying the uh, the greatest story ever told that uh, J.R.R. Tolkien describes as a uh, eucatastrophe. And uh, the goal of, uh, he believes the goal, of, especially of fairy stories, is to kind of try and uh, uh, copy that uh, eucatastrophic tale of uh, Christ's uh, death and resurrection and uh, his life uh, here on earth. And then obviously uh, his passion and then uh, the glorious resurrection and, 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 uh, his uh, being here with us, uh, the Anno Domini, Domini right? Uh, year of our Lord. Uh, that's how we uh, call it because he is he's still alive here in heaven. And we're trying to kind of reflect that uh, that story, uh, his story. Um, so I, and it seems to me that a lot of this stuff uh, is directly trying to contradict it. There's almost a war against uh, against that, against that type of storytelling, especially, when you look at stuff that uh, from from Hollywood, I mean, I was just looking at a Hollywood Reporter article about Amazon. There was a there was a part in it where they were talking about how Amazon was actually looking at focus groups, and this kind of goes to your talk about the market. And there, and I'm just going to kind of quote from this here. It says that uh, uh, Vernon Sanders, who's one of the top people at Amazon, uh, relies heavily on feedback from focus groups, which tend to favor uh, broad and less inclusive programming. Several Amazon insiders say the reliance on testing and data led to a clash late summer when an Amazon executive said in a marketing meeting for the series A League of Their Own that data showed audiences found queer stories off-putting and suggested downplaying those themes and materials promoting the show. So I, the data is showing what you're talking about. The market uh, does not uh, want a lot of this type of content. But again, you're having the studios are actually pushing back against it and, and trying to get it because it goes on and it says here series co-creator will graham became greatly concerned about bias being built into amazon system for evaluating shows which multiple sources say often ranked broad series uh featuring straight white male leads above all others one executive calls a league of their own a proxy for how diverse and inclusive shows are treated and i don't have this in front of me but uh, uh the hollywood reporter Su suggests that uh, their whole kind of like system for rating shows was scrapped because of this. Uh, <laughs> so I think that kind of goes to the point that you're talking about that. Yeah, there is the market is kind of against a lot of this stuff. We see this in just the, the people that are engaging with our content, right? I feel like it's growing larger and larger every year. I, I, you're seeing great success on your channel and over at the park place as well. So uh, I, I think that is true, but I don't think that uh, there's going to be any change with the studios because they're actively opposing uh, what the market and they're trying to shape. They're trying to shape the audience. Uh, Oren McIntyre had a really good tweet yesterday talking about kind of uh, Bud Light and uh, what they are doing uh, with that person who calls themselves Dylan uh, and how they're actually trying to shape the audience that they want, shape the consumers that they want, and they're doing it through advertising and. And and they're trying and the studios do it through the film that they're making. Bob Iger made that very clear in his uh, um, shareholders meeting just a couple days ago. So there's there's quite a few things that I want to target in on that you brought up. Uh, one of the things, well, first of all, it it is kind of funny because the market research that you're talking about in regards to Amazon, uh, we actually had information on about that prior to this being known, but we we could not talk about it uh, and we have to still be a little bit careful with it. But just to say that individuals who work on that sort of thing and try to deliver uh, as objective quality information and data as possible to these companies to show them what the consumer wants, they are aghast at what is happening because this is something that has been demonstrated over a century to be uh, just necessary for the production of content in, in any wide uh, stream of d different domains within, you know, consumer products, consumer services, entertainment, et cetera. And so the idea that a company would jettison what the consumer wants is just 
uh, it's unbelievable. And so the people who do that for a living, they, they're they shocked. But I do want to focus in on something you're talking about, which is that these, these companies seem to believe that they can uh, engineer their, their fan bases, that they can socially engineer the market so that they will convince or force the market to love the content they produce, which so far the market does not. And so my question to you, maybe this is philosophical, maybe it's more than that. Do you believe that the market can ultimately be subjugated to the desires of the elites? Or do you believe that the market will win and thereby the growth that you and I are seeing will continue and the diminishment of the studios will continue? Uh, so I definitely think it's possible for the the elites or whatever you want to call them, the heads of the studios that are kind of making a no, lot let of Let me decisions. take that back. Let me take that back, John. I don't like to call them elites in this <laughs> I, I'm getting tired of using that term because they don't deserve it anymore. But go ahead. Yeah, so um, the people, the, like the, the heads of the studios, people are making these creative decisions, greenlighting the projects and everything like that. I definitely think that uh, they can continue doing what they're doing and they will um, try and um, shape future generations uh, Bob Chapik made this clear in an email uh, when he decided to uh, position the company against the state of Florida, that that was their goal, even if there were laws being passed to try and prevent uh, indoctrination um, or trying to cultivate this new um, audience consumer base, that they were going to do it through their content. I, I definitely think that these people believe that they can do that. I think there is evidence showing that they can do this as well. I always go back to this story about uh, the De Beers company in Japan. They um, decided that they wanted Japanese people after in post-World War II Japan, that they wanted to have them purchase uh, diamond engagement rings for, uh, for their, for their for when they're getting engaged. And in Japanese culture, they didn't do that. They didn't, there's no, uh, no one bought engagement rings, diamond engagement rings when they were about to get married over there. But within uh, two decades, uh, everyone was buying diamond engagement rings because they had a really strong advertising campaign. So I think there is evidence that they can do that. And I think we're, we, we see that here today. I mean, um, I, I think there, I mean, I know Twitter is not the best place, but you can see it on Twitter. There are people that are uh, fanatics about this new type of content that I think actively rejects um, uh, what we as humans are actually called to, um, to be. Um, there's kind of this like war on, on, our, on our being and we see that kind of in the transgender ideology stuff that uh, they're all promoting. You're seeing it in Sony, you're seeing it uh, in, in Disney, uh, you're seeing it across the board in all of these studios and they're, they're promoting that. that. Um, so I'm kind of rambling here a little bit, but I do no, think no, no, that I, I, I do I, think I, I follow up on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's, there's plenty of evidence that shows that they can cultivate this, this new audience and that they are doing it. So I want to drill down on this because it's extremely meaningful to me. And I think that we all need to now begin recognizing what we're up against. And I, I mean this literally. I mean, yes. I, I think we're up against something that is very dark and that leads to hell on earth. And I, I'll, I'll just give you an intro into sort of why I think that. The other night I was at a dinner and we had various guests at the dinner. And one of the guests is a survivor of uh, the Cambodian genocide that occurred decades ago. And this individual, this lady, was talking about what she and her family, many of whom did not survive, what they had been through. And all of that began with very bad ideas, uncivilized ideas about equality of outcome, uh, making sure that you eliminated the people who were uh, specialists and experts in any given area because they wanted to flatten out the outcomes completely, right? And it was going to be some sort of utopia. And instead, what they wound up with was atrocities that I'm not going to talk about what she said. Uh, I, I'll say this, and I mean, some of it's just horrific, but it's, you, it's worth listening to. I don't want to go into it right now, but we, we have to look at the thing that we most fear or despise or loathe and under the, and, utter, and you've got to give the devil its due. And so, you know, one of the things she talked about was that entire villages would be brought to start digging a giant hole. And they all knew that they were digging the entire village's grave. 
They all knew that they would be placed around that hole at some point and that uh, the end would come. And you would, you would wonder, well, why would an entire village agree then to do that, right? Well, it's because death was coming one way or the other, and that was the better of the, of the uh, options that they had, given what they were being faced with. And, uh, you know, just to go into all, all of that was, well, it was quite something to hear. And it seems to me that very bad ideas, even in civilized places such as the United States, where we've had security and stability for a very long time, that those bad ideas erode the foundations and lead us, perhaps not to that place, perhaps it's not as bad, perhaps it's worse. I don't know. I don't know what hell looks like on earth uh, when it gets unleashed, you know, in a new place. But I can tell you that what you're talking about strikes me uh, right, to, right to the core because I think the battle that we are waging right now is one about the truth. Truth yes. versus power. Objective truth, the logos idea, mm -hmm. versus the idea of might is right and there is no truth. And, and that goes straight into that monotheistic uh, conclusion that we've had for a very long time where that objective truth is nested inside of it. And my concern is that as we look at what's happening now, perhaps we're in that Nietzsche moment where we where you talked about uh, God is dead and we have become the murderers of all murderers. Perhaps we're in that point now watching people who, because they have let go of that idea of objective truth, you just have to dig a little bit and you find out that they're this, this overbearing, out of its parameters empathy that they have. Let's say for children, take what you just were talking about, right? For children. Yeah. Empathy beyond its appropriate bounds becomes malice and evil. And so empathy, when it goes to the point of saying, oh, well, you, you don't want to be, you know, whatever this category is that we've randomly come up with, and you want to switch to a different category. Okay, fine, we'll do that. We will perma permanently uh, alter your body through surgical and chemical means. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you know? And time and time again, what I see out of this movement is that there's the, there's like this polished veneer that at the lowest resolution thinking, it looks nice, right? Well, we want to affirm all children. Okay. We want to protect all children. Okay. And then you go beyond that, just, just below the surface, and there's a monster lurking below it. And the monster is, well, we'll, we'll you know, chemically alter the child. It's like, whoa. Or you say, uh, you know, we, we want to go all electric. And you're like, well, that, that seems fine to me. And then the, the below the surface is, and by the way, we're going to mine it, you know, in the most pov impoverished countries on earth, With sending slaves. them in dangerously. Yes, exactly. To, uh, to, to do this involuntarily in the worst working conditions possible. And we will hide it with everything we have. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. The, the monster lurks below on all of this because truth has been eradicated in their lives. That's what we face. And it's, I mean, it really is significant. Now, you brought up Sony. What do you make of what Sony is doing with the trailer that they released? And, and dancing carefully because we are on YouTube. But what, what, what possible good can come of that financially for the company? Uh, I <clears throat> Again, I think that I the the good is that they're going to be um, crafting this new audience that they want to that, that that they've been crafting that all of Hollywood has been crafting, and that 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 this is part of that crafting that of that new audience that they want to they want to get and, and buying into that. And uh, you get a lot of confusion. These people are just kind of very confused. They don't really know um what's going on and they want to make them like hey we are this we are part of this like kind of new religion that we want you to buy into come watch our product so it's part of that kind of new religion it's part of a uh, almost a um i don't know how to say it like going to watch the movie is like a ritual of the new of that new religion and that's i think what the what they that's like what they kind of see i think that's what's kind of uh, behind it i'm not sure if that's what's actually happening within um, Sony executives' minds or the creators' minds, but I think that's kind of the overarching drive that's motivating them, whether it's this um, fake empathy that you're talking about uh, a little bit earlier there. Uh, but uh, as far as like a box office success in the short term, I, I think I don't think there's any kind of, uh, I think it's, it's going to hurt them. I've already seen lots of people saying they're not going to watch it at all anymore now, even though they watched the first one um, and, and people are do reject this stuff. 
Uh, but I do think it's a long-term play rather than any kind of short-term play at this point um, to try and craft this audience uh, that they want. And again, I think that there's um, ample room of, there's ample evidence showing that they can craft this audience. And I think that they are kind of doing that, especially uh, among uh, the younger generations. You just have to look at any kind of uh, poll uh, looking at how many people now actually um, are identify as atheist or agnostic within the United States, uh, people that identify as um, uh, different um, sexual orientations, etc. You see that it's just constantly increasing. So I do think that they are, again, it's a long-term play to craft the audience that they want to craft. So that's where I see that uh, from a long-term play. Uh, short-term play, financial success, I don't see it. I think it's going to, um, it's, it won't do well. So your, your position is that in the short term, it's damaging, but in the long term, they believe that they can socially engineer the populace such that it will buy into this content they're creating. But that's, that seems to me to be very difficult rather than just producing Top Guns, just producing Minions, just producing this new Harry Potter series that embraces J.K. Rowling in spite of the howls and the screeches of the, the people that we're talking about, the people who seem to be anti-Logos, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But there are some glimmers of hope there, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think Top Gun Maverick is obviously an exception. It kind of stands out. Um, I th was it clearly the best film of last year that I saw. Uh, didn't have any kind of agenda pushing in it. So it's not to say that there aren't people there that can make still the quality stories focused on the storytelling. We saw that, I guess, within with Tom Cruise's intro to the film. Uh, he was still focused on creating that entertainment. He still seems to have that kind of spirit of uh, J.R.R. Tolkien when he wrote in his uh, essay on fairy stories about what it means to tell a fairy story, uh, what it is for uh, storytelling at large. I think you can apply a lot of what he says, not just to fairy, story, fairy stories, but to other types of uh, fictional entertainment, especially uh, uh, movies now uh, and television shows. So let's talk about the idea of the anti-logos. And this, this needs for us to, to go a little deeper than usual for the channel in order to explain this, because I, I want to very clearly define who it is that we're against. And we are against someone now because once people want to begin permanently altering the physicalities of children, we have a problem. Uh, and that's true throughout history, and it's true right now. That's not okay. So we need yes. to specify who it is we're against, and these people seem to be using entertainment to further their goals. But when we when we use the term logos, what I'm referring to is the idea that the Greeks and the Romans came up with, which is the root from where we get the word logical. And the idea is that there is a there is the ability to articulate truth, and that that articulated truth is real. Now, that was taken mm -hmm. then in the Gospels, by the way, happy Easter weekend to everybody out there. Yes. Uh, we're going happy a little Easter. deeper than usual, I suppose. But that was, our, that was taken then in the Gospels, uh, specifically in the Gospel of John in the New, the New Testament. And the idea then was taken, this combination of Jerusalem and uh, of, of Rome and Athens, this combination of this thing, which said that, yes, the Logos is real, that articulated truth is real, this foundation, this undergirding of the universe, you know, that, that there is actually objective truth. It's real, and that that logos is uh, is Christ, and that Christ is yep. the logos incarnate, right? The the, the logos yes. come into human being, but these people that we're talking about, this postmodern neo Marxism, they are completely opposed. It seems to me to the idea of the logos, the idea of truth, as as something that is actually real. They just believe in power. Why do you think that they are so ravenous about, about getting rid of the truth and about creating entertainment which upholds whatever this new quasi-religion is that they've created? Yeah, so I think it's the ancient enemy. Uh, I'm going to just kind of quote uh, Cardinal Carlo Cafara here. He did a speech in May 2017 at the uh, annual uh, Rome Life Forum. And as part of this speech, he said at the root of this is the work of Satan who wants to build an actual anti-creation. This is the ultimate and terrible challenge which Satan is hurling at God. I am demonstrating to you that I am capable of constructing an alternative to your creation and man will say it is better uh, in the alternative creation than in your creation. And I think that uh, clearly, um, I, I can't say it any better than that. He's identifying who the enemy is, why they're doing it, um, and why we're seeing it play out in our uh, entertainment uh, here in the United States. Well, you know, it's, it's 
the idea of getting rid of logic, and that's really what this comes down to. So, you know, and, and I just want to say for all of those out there watching, you know, we may have some agnostics, we may have some atheists, we may have some Buddhists. Clearly, I mean, the, the audience is huge, so we may have people of all different backgrounds watching. And I just want to say that if you if you're not aligned with the idea of Christianity, don't worry because. I dislike bad religious people even more than I dislike uh, people who don't know what, what they're doing. And we're all learning and growing and trying to figure things out. But this, this idea of getting rid of logic itself, whether or not you believe that is manifested in Christ or whether or not you believe that it's in some sort of uh, objective observation of the universe, I think that there's, a, there's, that there's a joining of partnerships here in that the people who believe in just truth alone, right? However you might decide that truth you know is manifested in the world that that's what is under fire currently from these idiots and i mean it these idiots who would alter children who would who would create merchandise at scale using involuntary labor that we have a different word for historically these people who they completely ignore what's going on in east asia to our own <laughs> detriment these people who want to uh, save the planet by creating green energy. And so they chop down vast swaths of, of forest and habitat in Florida, a corridor of wildlife, and they replace it with uh, huge solar farms that destroy the environment that they supposedly seek to save. It's None of it makes any sense, and that's what they're against. They're against the sensibilities of normal, truthful people. Yeah, I I I hundred percent agree with that. I, again, it's 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 the they're trying to create an anti creation, as uh, Cardinal Kafara said there, and and the evidence is there. I mean, you pointed it out. Uh, that's what they're doing. I I could point to uh, I don't know. If, I'm not going to bring it up, but uh, I don't know how to rephrase it um, in order to like get around like the YouTube censors because I know that they censor this word. Well, you know, <laughs> um, I don't, John, I don't yeah. know if you know this, but there were, a few days ago we put out a video that was in regards to the situation with Jonathan May. And uh, that was hit. Oh, with a, that was hit with a label. I saw you. I saw that. I saw you tweet about that. But uh, it, well, we gotta be careful. They're watching. Yeah, basically, um, uh, it's not just uh, doing things to children that are born alive, but also the ones that are still unborn. Um, sure, sure, is, absolutely. Is another example there too is kind of where I'm trying to get out there. I hope maybe that gets around. <laughs> we'll see the, the debasement of humanity in, in yeah. many different areas. Yes, and it's across the board. I mean, I mean, you're pointing out uh, we're we're seeing it with what they're doing with with young children. We're seeing it with what they're doing to unborn children. We're seeing what they're doing it to um, children in mines in in Asia. We're seeing um, what they're doing to the environment that's been created. Again, I mean, there's lots of evidence that this is what is happening, and it's and it's it, it, anyone. Like once you see it, I think Melanie Mack had a tweet about it the other night. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. You you constantly see it around you and, and you know what the real fight is. And it is a, a spiritual war. It's a spiritual combat. Um, and, and, that, and that is what we're in. It's not a culture war. It is a spiritual war. It is so, a war for your soul. So I, I do want to get into finding out about how you became involved in all of this, how it is that you started your website. Before we do, I've got a deep question that I want to bring to the table, and I don't know how you'll respond to this at all. But one of the things that I'm keenly interested in is, is sort of defining consciousness and defining the soul, defining the mind, what it is that makes us special. You know, Because everything that we view the world through is through this, this mind that we have, this consciousness that we have. Uh, we're watching the rise of artificial intelligence. We don't know. You know, what it means for art artificial intelligence to be thinking, for it to be doing things that are typically reserved for humanity. We don't know if it has consciousness. We don't even know how to describe what consciousness is, right? That's the huge challenge we've faced for, for thousands of years is figuring out what, what are we? You know, here we sit in this physical world, but everything we experience it through is, is immaterial. It's beyond that. And so I, I think one of the things at the heart of this, besides just this hatred for the Logos, is that they have bought into somehow a deterministic worldview that, that shows in some way that consciousness, the very, or the mind, the very thing through which you experience the entire world, the qualia that comes through, that all of that is a facade, that it's all just an illusion. 
And so they've taken the actual human experience and made it illusory. And I think that consciousness is, is something that we don't even come close to understanding. I think that it is real, and I think it is beyond the physical world in some way that we don't quite yet comprehend. I, I also think that, uh, that we are not deterministic. I think that if you, believe, if you buy into this idea that we're just zeros and ones, that we're just cause and effect, that we, we have no free will, I think that civilization falls apart very rapidly and everything goes to hell. Do you think that's also part of this? And, and should we be talking about it more? Should we be elevating what some might call the divinity of each individual, right? The idea that we're made in the image of the divine. What, what do you think of it? Oh, 100%. I mean, I think that's at the core of uh, what the problems that we're having is that there is no respect for the dignity of uh, human life anymore across the board. Again, the examples that you pointed out that shows that there is no respect for the dignity of human life. Um, and that we are made in the image of Christ and that uh, God created us uh, and has a plan for each and every one of us. And that is what separates us from other animals is that we do have this conscious. We have the ability to reason. We have uh, free will and choice. Uh, and I do think that uh, what you're, like what you're, the questions you're asking is that the fact that we are, there's people that are actively trying to um, reject that dignity, reject um, uh, reject our uh, creation it, it is a massive problem within our society right now. Uh, and I think that uh, that's why you see people just kind of uh, crime is on the rise because they don't have any uh, respect for the dignity of human life. Um, our trust with, the, with, the, with each other has kind of fallen down, uh, plummeted. Actually, we don't really trust our, our neighbors anymore. I mean, it, it is a massive problem. And I think it's one of the ones that is at the root of it. And uh, it's something that I do think probably needs to be discussed more. And again, it's more of a, we're in a spiritual war more than a um, cultural war. Uh, and, and the fact that we don't talk about that enough, I do think kind of is trying to hide the fact of, of the reality of the situation that we're in. And we should be talking about it more. And we should be um, pointing to this evidence uh, that shows that we are, we are in um, the spiritual war rather than a cultural war. Because I know you point, you were pointing out, um, you, you referenced like neo-Marxism and everything like that. But I, I also think there's a uh, very um, powerful capitalism is, is can also can lead to a lot of this stuff too. Uh, I think the the lack of the dignity of a human person, especially when you're talking about what's going on um, with the green energy movement, I think that is kind of uh, maybe part of that uh, greed associated with capitalism. And there's definitely room to criticize that as well when you're kind of elevating uh, the almighty dollar over over Christ, and you're putting that that uh, ahead. So th there's definitely room for a lot of these things to be criticized, and I think um, it, it's a multi um, multi pronged attack that we're being attacked by. Um, so we have to be very very um, diligent and aware of what's going on, and and kind of craft the the tools and armor and weapons we need to um, to fight it back against it. And that's really um, looking at um, virtues uh, that we can have, like such as chastity, charity, um, patience, obedience. Um, there, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of others, but those are things that we uh, that also show the dignity of a human person. And I think if you develop those those virtues and you kind of show that, you can also lead by example. And I think that shows other people um, that hey, we do all have um, a dignity and um, can kind of hopefully turn turn everything around here uh, on this earthly plane. You know, we're, we're delving into more uh, religious terminology than I usually do on the channel, but I don't know what else we can do because the people who are driven to drive our entertainment into the ground, their, their motivation is quasi-religious or religious uh, explicitly. And what keyed me in on this to know that it had gone beyond what, what I have described as the culture war, and that's just common nomenclature, so I use it, but what's keyed me in on it being beyond that is, is, is think about this and tell me what you, you think of it. Cultures can play with one another, right? You can be culturally different from somebody, and you can learn and adapt and, and grow and take in some of their culture, and you share your culture with them, and that... You, you enter into this area of unexplored territory when you interact with somebody from an unknown culture. And if you, if you do it right, then both sides can be made better by, by the uh, sharing of those cultures with one, 
one another. But what, so, so that, so we're beyond that. And what we're beyond is, I've described this to Jonas Campbell in a video recently in Martin Stone. Uh, it's the eradication of the spirit of reciprocal voluntary play. And what I mean by that is this other side that wants to control entertainment, that wants to socio uh, engineer the, the, the culture around us, that wants to fight against the idea of objective truth, they don't want to play with us. They don't want to play by the rules with us. They don't, I mean, they simply want the power. They want the control, but they don't want to do it through any sort of uh, preconceived or agreed upon set of criteria. They simply want control. And that takes it beyond any sort of cultural thing because we're no longer in a reciprocal relationship. What do you think of it? Yeah, I, I think you're right there. And I, I would go further. They don't want they don't just want control. They want you dead. Um, again, pointing to all of the things we've kind of already talked about here that leads to death, violence, pain, suffering. Uh, do you think all they know that's things. where this road leads? Do you think they understand or do you think they're just so naive and uh, dogmatized that they don't so they don't understand it? I think our the spiritual foes that we're fighting, the demons clearly know that that is their ultimate goal. They want us to be uh, dragged down to hell with them. Uh, I think a lot of uh, people are clearly misguided, especially within the uh, gender identity, sexual orientation movement. Those they are have clearly been manipulated by a lot of the propaganda coming from the state, from these uh, Hollywood companies. Uh, t TV shows, movies, etc., uh, works of like literature as well, universities, uh, education, all that stuff happening. Um, they are definitely been misguided by a lot of this stuff. They've been fed lots of uh, lies and have kind of bought into it. And, and you, you pray for those people uh, and hope that they will uh, realize the truth and, uh, and, and reject the lies that they've been um, propagandized with. Um, well, pragmatically, so, you know, John, it, it doesn't lead to good for anybody. If you look no, at what happens in these totalitarian regimes, when you look at what happens in authoritarianism, when you look at what happens with uh, equalized outcomes, the people who believe in it, they don't, they don't get ahead either. It is a very select few. And by the way, all of you listening, you're not in it, no matter what you think. The, the, the people who uh, succeed in that, that uh, arena, you can count on your hand, and then they usually are toppled in violent means so nobody wins yeah. it is simply hell yeah you can just look at uh any of the uh major 20th 21st century um, totalitarian regimes you can look at the soviet union constant paranoia from the leadership they were executing their close allies believing that they were trying to usurp them and a lot of times they were i mean uh, same with China. I was looking at a Twitter thread where they were basically just like going through all of the people that were like basically Mao's right hand man. And then he would execute them when he thought they were getting a little bit too much power because he was so filled with paranoia that they were going to basically um, uh, be they were going to Brutus. <laughs> he was and then you have to say, OK, then John, you have them. to say, too, that not even Mao escapes this. Right. Nobody gets away with no, anything he, in this life. But he doesn't escape no. it because he has to live in paranoia that someone's exactly. going to kill him every day of his life. That's right. So he's like he's 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 in this. He's created a prison in his own mind, yeah. uh, and he's become a slave to it. Yeah. Well, you know, but the, the fervor is there with people wanting to push us. Perhaps not there, but push us in the direction of there. Not realizing that you don't want to take a single step towards it. John, right, when did you again, get? Go ahead. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate it. That that's what the spiritual forces that we are fighting against want us to to do. They want us to be in pain, suffering, and they eventually want to uh, to kill us and bring us down um, to hell with them. So, John, when did you get involved in attempting to shape the culture to fight back against this? And what what brought you? I'm assuming that you are the the creator of Bounding into Comics. Is that correct? Yes, I'm the founder and editor in chief now. I do not own uh, I do not own it anymore. I sold it uh, a couple years ago, uh, which allowed me the opportunity to actually kind of do it full time and be able to grow it to where it is today. So I'm actually really happy about that opportunity. But uh, to answer that question, to answer your question, um, I was I was fighting a uh, I was fighting a culture war, uh, not a spiritual war. I was still a man of of 
of the of the world. I still struggle against that uh, to this day, as we all do, given our fallen nature. But uh, yeah, I was <clears throat> I was basically I was I was working for a government contractor here outside DC. Uh, didn't like what I saw. Decided to go back to uh, college, get my master's degree. Uh, was working on that. Got an internship at a political action committee. Uh, it was a libertarian organization called Freedom Works. So I was kind of very um, uh, elevating the market and and this idea that the market can like solve all problems and believe that it could. It was I was basically worshiping it as a god at the time, uh, not realizing that because I I had I had bought in. I I was kind of blinded by what was actually happening. Uh, but I was doing that and and kind of getting involved in some local politics and stuff like that on, on, on my free time. And then um, moved on to a couple other organizations, uh, wrapped up my master's degree. And then I got a job for uh, another organization called Generation Opportunity, which I don't even know if it exists anymore now. It's basically a front for um, uh, the Coke the Coke organizations. I don't, they, I don't sure. know if you're familiar with them, but they're kind of uh, industrialists and they had a number of uh, political groups and I was working for them, really kind of saw the underbelly of that, kind of got jaded by it, didn't really think that they were actually uh, believing what they were preaching. You, you kept finding uh, but, corruption in these different things that you were buying into. Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, but eventually when I was working there, uh, I had a lot of free time. So I started the website um, uh, in my free time there. And uh, I was mainly just doing comic book reviews for the most part and eventually just continued to, uh, to grow it and started getting like press releases from Marvel, DC. Uh, and, right, but, and, but most uh, people publishers. use their free time to play solitaire or they use their <laughs> free time to uh, play video games or read websites. What inspired you to create a website? Um, I, I don't know if there was anything like specific. I was just, I wanted to... To work, I guess I, I, I even um, before I wanted to like I was I didn't want to just sit around and 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 be bored. I that was uh, I I had experienced that on multiple occasions. Where, like I mean, you get it when you kind of like get sick and you're just, like three or four days. You just want to like get up and move and get out there. You want to like actually like do something. You find value in that. Uh, and I guess that's what I was. I was just tired of just kind of like sitting around doing nothing. And I wanted to actually like um, learn learn a new skill. Um, uh, do something do you feel like I was like contributing like actually do some kind of work even if it was just kind of a lot of mental work and just reviewing comic books um, so that I think that's where that kind of motivation came from is just seeing the value in work and wanting to actually uh, do that keep my hands and mind busy rather than um, being subjected to uh, to boredom out of the uh, thousands of websites that are created each day the website that you decided to begin has turned into a major force inside our culture. I don't think people realize the reach that you have. I don't know your exact viewership and I'm not asking you to give that, but I can tell you that every time I click on a YouTube channel with millions of subscribers and they're sitting there reading your articles or the articles of the other writers at Bounding Into Comics, no doubt that is then uh, sending waves all throughout you know, the various uh, sectors of, of our culture. Why do you think that out of those thousands of websites created each and every day that fall to the wayside, what, what set yours apart? And did you have any, any struggles at any point? Yeah, so we definitely had our struggles. Um, so, I mean, uh, obviously transitioning it from like just doing comic book reviews to kind of um, basically just being, <laughs> we were a shill site at a point where just doing uh, press releases hadn't really kind of uh, dived into like what was going on. Obviously, started covering some of that stuff uh especially i remember there's a bad girl variant cover was one of the first things i think we covered uh from like an editorial standpoint because mainly we were just doing press releases for like upcoming comics that were coming out uh but there there's this bad girl cover that was homaging um uh killing joke and people were just all really upset about it. and i didn't think there was anything wrong with the cover it was an obvious it was a variant cover first off and it was obviously a an homage to killing joke with Joker having his arm around uh, Barbara Gordon and had like painted a Joker smile on her face and everything. Uh, so that's kind of where we dipped our toes in on the culture or the, at the culture I was called, I was still calling it like kind of the culture war, war at that point. Um, and then eventually like 2017, 2018, I think is when I, around when I sold the site and obviously we had some growing pains there, just kind of getting off the ground, figuring out what we're doing. Cause that was, 
in a time of uh, transition, especially with uh, like social media and Facebook, where they Facebook completely changed how they distributed content. So we had to work around that. Um, and I kind of deployed a strategy where I would try and reach out to other people that I knew were in the sphere, specifically your boy Zach or Comics Matter. Uh, I was uh, reaching out to him, other uh, creators that had similar ideas. So I was really doing a lot of like old school, I guess, uh, marketing tactics, but in a new school way where I wasn't actually meeting them or like uh, in person, I was just kind of communicating with them through uh, Twitter, social media, uh, and everything like that. But most of them were on YouTube or they were doing stuff on Twitter. They were trying to like sell their, sell their comics. <clears throat> and uh, we, were, we were obviously a news site, news and opinion site. So um, we, we still kind of struggled through that, um, figuring out how to, to uh, build, up, uh, build up a user base, but we just kept kind of plugging away at it. Um, and fortunately, the company I worked for had faith in me and um, it, the hard work paid off and, and uh, we're at, we are where we're at now. That's not to say we still don't have struggles. I mean, there's still stuff on the back end. I know you've, you've experienced it at that park place with kind of hosting. Fortunately, we haven't had that issue, but we do have issues uh, sometimes with ad partners and everything like that. So um, just because uh, those companies are captured by <laughs> by people that oppose kind of uh, the the editorials and opinions that we uh, think, publish on, on, your side, the ads, on your side, it was the ads. On our side, it was the servers. Uh, so uh, I, I yeah, definitely so feel that. Did you ever think that your website would become what it is now? I mean, was this ever in your wildest dreams that it would become up there in the pantheon of websites? You know, people know bounding into comics now like they know IGN. So, and I don't yeah, know I if don't, that's a, an insult or a compliment. <laughs> you were blocked by IGN, uh, ironically, <laughs> on Twitter. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to make this sound like be feel prideful or anything. But yeah, I did feel like I I could get it to where it was. That that um, that was like mainly the main contributing reason why I did sell it because I knew I could um, I could build it up. I, I had faith in in the abilities that God gave me. And uh, all glory to him on, on this, but uh, yeah, I did. I, I thought I could, I could get it to where it was, and because um, uh, I, I kind of done it a little bit earlier with one of the websites I was working on, another website that company had that I had seen significant growth with. So I was confident that I could do that. Um, maybe not to the extent that it is now. I mean, I still struggle with YouTube. I, I haven't figured out YouTube. Um, <laughs> uh, YouTube is like a whole nother animal, and I just haven't figured that out yet. But um, we'll, we'll get we'll get there together. We'll just yeah. keep going up together. Yeah, I just kind of keep plugging away on it. But uh, yeah, I, I had confidence that I could 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 make it successful. Uh, maybe not to the extent that it is now. I mean, we've had really really good success, and I truly appreciate everyone that does support us. Reads the site, um, shares our articles, reads our articles on YouTube. Uh, really thankful for that, and it is humbling seeing um, so many people um, uh, read read our articles and talk about the stuff that we're covering uh, on YouTube, especially yourself, Valiant Renegade, people like Gary B. Clair, Nerdrotic, Heel vs. Babyface, Jeremy, Geeks and Gamers, Ryan Kinnell. Um, there's so many other people. I mean, <clears throat> Orange Hat Reviews uh, reads our stuff. And um, Tim from Open Airlock covering Star Wars stuff. I mean, there's so many different people and so many different people with different views too uh, as well because um, some people have different thoughts on, on Star Wars and different thoughts on Star Trek and, and everything like that. But it, and it's great to see that um, be, everyone that does have different thoughts, they might disagree with even my opinions on a lot of things. Uh, they still continue to read, read our site. Cause I think we do cut through a lot of the, a lot of the um, narrative that's out there. Something that you do uh, especially well here on YouTube as well. You know, it's, it's a joy. I think that there are so many people who still buy into this idea of the logos. However, they might articulate that, however, they might do it differently, but they're not offended then when you have a different opinion, because if you're trying to get at the truth and they're trying to get at the truth, we just all muddle towards it together. It's the people who uh, they just want power. They no longer care about whether their stuff is good or bad. That's indifferent. It's just about power. But uh, John, I think it's a good place to wrap up here. Well, what are your let final me just... thoughts before we, before we head out? Yeah, just kind of what you said there, uh, going back to like one of the struggles, and that's something I personally struggled with was when I did kind of revert back to my uh, Catholic faith. Because um, again, I wasn't practicing my faith uh, when I first started the site. And even when I 
had sold it. And so that was one of the struggles that I had was figuring out the types of uh, content that uh, I wanted to publish and being aware of that, something that clearly the people at these um, Hollywood studios uh, seemingly don't struggle with. Um, and that's and, and I changed a lot of some of our content. We used to do pinup stories. We do not do those at all anymore. I mean, obviously they're still on the site. You can still see them, but we don't. I don't. We don't publish stuff like that at you all want, anymore. Just, is, it, is it fair to say you wanted the site to aim higher than that? Yes. Yeah. And I think that was something that um, uh, God God had planned for me as well. Um, uh, and and I think yeah. We well, you know. I think it's I important. Think it's way I think it's important that. for all of entertainment to aim us higher. If not, then we aspire to be less than what we could be. I mean, why would you not want to reach the maximum potential that you possibly could? And by that, I mean get closer to that logos, get closer to that divine source. If if you're not aiming for that, then you're missing out on the adventure of your life. Yeah, and I think you're kind of echoing what Tolkien wrote in his. Um, in his on fairy stories he says here oh let's see if i can find it just because i like to i like i'm very like i know i'm gonna butcher it if i try and paraphrase it so it's always oh, no. better to um to just kind of quote it here uh, yeah, where does he say it here he says that i think it's at the beginning here uh he says right here the you could you could catastrophic tale is the true form of fairy tale and its highest function and he describes uh, a eucatastrophe um, as this kind of uh, the constellation of fairy tales has another aspect than the imaginative satisfaction of ancient desires far more important is the constellation of the happy ending almost I would venture to assert that all complete fairy stories must have it at least I would say that tragedy is the true form of, dra of drama its highest function but the opposite is true of fairy st stories since we do not appear to possess a word that expresses this opposite I will call it eucatastrophe. And then he goes on to say the eucatastrophic tale is the true form of fairy tale and its highest function. And I think that uh, that is 100% um, accurate. And I think that's uh, uh, you. I think you can apply that to to our lives and as well that we want to achieve this eucatastrophe in our life. It transcends the entertainment industry. It, it, it transcends the narrative, and it may just be so real that it's real to us. John, yes. I'll be coming out with a, a video this weekend I think you will enjoy. It'll be coming out Sunday where I'm going to bring together some individuals of expertise and we're actually going to look at uh, parallels and, and sharing of motifs between the crucifixion and resurrection and Star Wars. So be watching for that video. I think you'll enjoy, based on what we've talked about today, uh, it's going to be called the Star Wars Holiday Easter Special, I believe is what we're going to call that one. But uh, huh. keep watching out for it. Yeah, I'll definitely look at look for that because uh, I do think that's something that Lucas was heavily inspired by uh, in, in his Star Wars tale. That uh, I think goes a lot of times people don't uh, s they intentionally try not to see it anymore, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why Lucasfilm and Star Wars have struggled so much because they don't recognize uh, the transcendence of the Star Wars tale. Absolutely. Well, folks, we went deeper than we usually go on this. I hope, I mean, I don't know how people are going to respond. I hope it's very well to it. I hope it uplifted all of you, at the very least, gave you some things to think about. It's okay to disagree with us on a number of things. In fact, that's why that comment section exists. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you like content, like it. Click the like button, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. When you do, you stick it to the algorithms. Don't forget that the Pro Show is Thursdays, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time Live, and... We have memberships now with all kinds of exclusive content. We are attempting to revolutionize citizen journalism, especially in entertainment. So check out those membership perks and see how we're doing just a little bit more than giving you some freebies, but actually bringing you into the game with us. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.